Hi guys, Marcus here, and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, October 22nd, 2020. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and this is episode 298. Now, because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, click CC for English subs. I create them myself. In this episode, Kenny Lin's My Bargain Queen wraps filming, and Leo Luo rises to stardom. But first, as always, here's what's recently premiered. First, there's The Blooms at Rui Pavilion, starring Zhu Jingyi and Zhang Zihan, which premiered yesterday, October 21st. The drama follows Fu Rong, a girl who runs away from her wealthy family to escape an arranged marriage. She meets Xu Jing, an arrogant prince at a poem recitation festival, and together they solve crimes and thwart a rebellion in the capital. I checked out the first episode and it certainly has its lighthearted moments. Here is Fu Rong dressed as a male fortune teller reading Xu Jing's palm. And here she is after he rescues her from some henchmen. She is blinded by her own fragrant powder. The drama is available on IQ.com with English subs. Black Lighthouse is a modern drama starring Janice Wu and Eric Yang, and it premiered yesterday as well. Janice Wu plays a girl who stumbles upon a job as an intern at the People's Court. Then with her new look and new passion for the law, she sets her sights on becoming a judge. Eric Yang plays a high-level prosecutor who shares the courtroom with her on many occasions. The drama is available on Mango TV, no English subs at the moment. Dear My Young Street is a modern drama starring Seven Tan and Timmy Xu, and it premiered earlier today. Set in the 80s, it revolves around three kids, Xiao Xiao played by Seven Tan, Xiao Jian played by Timmy Xu, and Dong Dong played by Niu Junfeng. All hail from the Mayang Street neighborhood in Guangzhou. The drama follows their love lives and different paths they take in life. Dear Mayang Street hasn't been made very available. It's only on Yuku and not with English subs. I'll update again if and when it becomes available on YouTube. And from dramas that recently premiered, we move on to three dramas that have recently wrapped filming, beginning with My Bargain Queen. My Bargain Queen is an upcoming modern drama starring Kenny Lin and Wu Jingyan, and they wrapped filming on October 19th after a three-month shoot. Here's a nice picture of the main cast and director. I guess the cat's out of the bag. Kenny Lin and Wu Jingyan's characters get married at some point in the story. Here are co-stars Nikki Wu and Rain Wang at their rap. Wu Jingyan plays a woman soon to be married, but instead of experiencing the most blissful day of her life, she is ditched by her fiancé who gets cold feet. On top of that, she clashes with the hotel manager played by Kenny Lin, who refuses to give her a refund, but after some bargaining, she gets it from him. She discovers that she has a talent for bargaining and forms a company which specializes in that, hence the title My Bargain Queen. Whether a drama or a movie, Kenny Lin is quite selective of his projects. He seems like a chill and take it easy type, as opposed to a one project after another type. He hasn't done a movie since 2018's The Four Heavenly Kings. His last drama to air was Princess Agents back in 2017, in which he starred as the quiet but skillful martial arts master Yu Wenyue. On the other end of the spectrum is Wu Jingyan, who's been knocking out dramas like nobody's business. She has like seven awaiting release. Wu Jingyan shot to fame when she starred in the super popular palace drama The Story of Yanxi Palace. Her most recent drama to air was Happiness Will Come Knocking Again, in which she starred with Nie Yuan. I will give more updates on My Bargain Queen as they provide them. And another drama that's wrapped filming recently is The Justice. The Justice is an upcoming Republican-era drama starring Steven Zhang and Elvira Chai, and they wrapped filming on October 12th after a four-month shoot. Here are the two stars with their customary wrap bouquets. Set in the 1930s, the drama follows Steven Zhang's character, an industrious businessman who rose from humble beginnings. He marries a banker's daughter played by Elvira Chai, and together they attempt to revolutionize Shanghai's banking industry. However, they face opposition from a dirty money empire boss played by Zhang Zijian. And the final drama to recently wrap filming is Brocade Heart Like Jade. 
Brocade Heart Like Jade is an upcoming costume drama starring Wallace Chung and Seven Tan, and they wrapped filming on October 15th after a four month shoot. Here's a colorful group photo taken on wrap day. Brocade Heart Like Jade is set in the Ming Dynasty and follows Seven Tan's character, the illegitimate daughter of the Luo family. She marries Wallace Chung's character, a powerful duke, to save her family's wealth. After that, she must learn to survive the vicious politics that exists within a powerful and influential family. I'm really digging the colors and style of these Ming Dynasty costumes. Brocade Heart Like Jade is a literal translation of its Chinese title. At the moment, there's no official or working English title yet. Wallace Chung's last drama to air was All Out of Love back in 2018, whereas Seven Tans was Go Ahead, in which she starred with Sung Wei Long and Steven Zhan. Seven is having a great year so far in terms of dramas, and it looks like that's going to continue. I will give more updates on Brocade Heart Like Jade as they provide them. And for the final segment today, I want to talk a little bit about Leo Luo. Leo stars in the number one web drama today, and having read quite a bit about him lately, I thought I'd share some thoughts about him and his rise to stardom in a segment called Leo Luo His Story. Leo Luo was born on July 28, 1988 in Chengdu. When he was five, he followed his father, who was a dance teacher, to his dance rehearsal hall, and that sparked a lifelong interest in dance. Leo trained professionally in ballet for 11 years and eventually enrolled at the Shanghai Theatre Academy where he majored in dance. After graduation, he returned home to Chengdu to become a ballet instructor, but his friend persuaded him to quit teaching and form a boy band. If your friend ever comes up to you and tells you to quit your job and form a boy or girl band, I would say think twice about it. Yes, following your heart is important, but don't rush into it. Weigh your options. It could be the worst idea ever, or it could be the best decision of your life. Leo took the leap, and it worked out, eventually. In 2010, at age 22, Leo debuted as part of the three-member boy group J-Boy 3. They disbanded two years later, and he teamed up with another performer to form a two-member boy group, Double J. They released some singles and performed at some shows, but ultimately disbanded a year later. So a three-member group didn't work, a two-member one didn't either. Maybe it was time to fly solo, and he did, except he took a turn and ventured into acting. Leo made his acting debut in 2012 when he was cast in the romance movie The Spring of My Life opposite Seven Tan of all people. Imagine if they headlined a drama today, it would certainly grab attention. Anyway, he found his footing in acting as he went on to film several dramas over the next couple of years. But although he was working lots, they were mostly supporting roles. And then in 2018, Leo starred in the fantasy romance drama Ashes of Love as Ren Yu, an ambitious immortal who sets out to avenge his mother's death. The drama was a huge hit and led to increased recognition for him even though he wasn't the main lead. Then in 2019 came Princess Silver. He wasn't the main lead in that either, but he was getting noticed and people were really starting to talk about him getting main lead roles. 2020 would be the year for Leo Luo. He starred in And the Winner is Love with Yuki Chen. It topped web drama viewing charts during its run in the summer. He also currently stars in Love is Sweet with Bai Lu. That's topping viewing charts at the moment. So I decided to do this bit on Leo because I love what he did in the earlier part of his career. First of all, he reached for the stars by quitting his job and joining a boy band. Now again, that's not always the best thing to do. If you ever find yourself facing a similar dilemma, please consider all options and be sure you know what you're doing. But secondly, I like that he didn't have tunnel vision and that he was able to make that turn to put himself in a position to be successful. He didn't just stick to music and dancing, he explored other options, not completely different options, they were still in the realm of performing arts, and gave it a shot. And that's my parting thought for the day. Whatever it is that you do in life, if you find yourself stuck or in a rut, maybe take a page out of Leo's book and see if you can take that turn that takes you to success and happiness. I know I've done it a couple of times in my life. 
And that's it for this episode. If you found some value from it, do subscribe. It really does help the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, check out my Patreon page where for a dollar more a month, I'll answer one of your questions at the end of one of my episodes. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers!